Hey folks, Daniel Osborne here. This is video number 98 in the series that corresponds to the book, Road of Happy Destiny. And we're gonna talk about toxic people and what scripture says about dealing with uh, those kind of individuals and how we handle that, what God wants us to do, what he doesn't want us to do, um, and the kind of choices that we should make when it comes to the people that we surround ourselves with. Um, I was reading today in 1 Corinthians chapter five, um, and I'll unpack this a little bit for us. I'm gonna preface it with this though. When you're the most put together person out of the group of people that you spend the most time with, you don't really have anything to aspire to. It's so important, it is so important to have mentors in, in, a, in a person's life and folks that have things about their, uh, their life or their character that they, wanna, that they want to have for themselves. Um, if you don't have anything or anybody to aspire to, or anything to aspire to, you don't really go anywhere. So again, if you're the most put together person and of everybody you hang out with, you're like the leader or you're the, the one that's morally, um, not morally bankrupt um, as opposed to the others that might have some you know, ethical issues or dilemmas, um, then you're kind of stuck there. Um, it's so hard, it's not, you're not permanently stuck and it's not 100%, you're not going anywhere, but it's difficult. If you don't have your eyes set on a goal or a person uh, or people, that uh, have been there and done that and have something that you would like to have in your life, then what ends up happening is you get stagnant and complacent and you get content with where you're at. That's happened in my life. Uh, but I have some pretty incredible men in my life that are mentors and that, uh, um, and that guide me along the path and they have a lot of things going on that I would love to have in my life and because I follow them um, and I seek their wisdom uh, while they are actually open to accepting mine sometimes also, um, I'm getting somewhere in life. Uh, sorry about the sun there, it'll change direction here in a minute as I come around this bend. But anyway, so let's unpack chapter 5 of 1 Corinthians. What's, what's going on is Paul is talking to the church and he's saying, look, I found out that there's some sexual immorality going on um, in the church uh, at Corinth. And what's happening is that there are at least one person, if not a number of them, uh, men who are sleeping with their father's wife. Um, that in and of itself is obviously pretty terrible um, and there may have been more going on in that situation or those circumstances than what scripture says uh, or lets us know but ultimately what Paul is saying is look if you're a believer and you're doing these kind of things you're gonna ultimately be delivered over to Satan and he's going to destroy your flesh that's what that's what Paul is calling for he's calling for people that are uh, that are involved in those kind of activities to be delivered over to Satan to be dealt with so that Satan will destroy their the physical part of who they are and provide an opportunity um, for the spirit to be saved on the day when the day of the Lord comes um, that's pretty dark uh, that Paul would ask that um, and oftentimes I've experienced this I mean I've been sexually immoral before I've been you know what's the word um, Promiscuous, we'll say say that, um, and um, and not the greatest uh, circumstances came out of that. Um, I wasn't living a righteous life. Blessings weren't flowing as much in my life. My connection, but more importantly, my connection with God wasn't as strong. Um, he had to not leave me, but kind of turn away a little bit because he can't be in an unholy vessel. He can't dwell in circumstances where unrighteousness and uncleanness and negativity and evil is taking place. So anyway, back to the scriptures. What is being uh, called for here um, by the Lord through Paul in his writings is that when there is a believer, now when there's an unbeliever, we don't really mess with them anyway. We want to spread the word, we want to spread, you know, plant seeds, we want to, you know, win souls for Christ, yeah. But as far as the majority of our time goes, we don't want to be um, involved with people that are unbelievers um, on an intimate level or a majority level where we're, um, let me get that sun out of the way here a little bit. If I can, there we go. Maybe you can do it this way. Ah, there we go. All right. So, uh, what Paul is saying again is with the unbelievers, don't really mess with them. I mean, we want to save souls for Christ. We want to go out there and, and spread the word and scream it from the housetops, from rooftops. We want to, you know, yell it to the world about the good news. Um, but what he's also saying uh, is in, in the same way, though, especially when it's a believer, when there is a brother or a sister in, in the faith that is falling short of the calling of their life and the and not being obedient to God, being particularly or specifically either sexually immoral, uh, a drunkard, uh, somebody that's getting high actively or uh, or drinking or you know to excess, 
uh, somebody that is um, involved in idolatry where they don't have God first in their life, people that uh, are covetous and jealous of others and what they have and want to go after that and have you know maybe hurtful feelings towards them because, because they want what they have, those kind of folks. Um, the list kind of goes on. Um, I think I might be missing one important one, but I'll have to come back to that. Um, if there's a believer, that is, a Christian that's engaged in those kind of behaviors, and they won't stop, that's the key. If they will not stop, even after we've brought them to the brought their to their attention that they're they're messing up, we're called to a rebuke and correct and uh, edify, teach those that are uh, those that are in the faith and those that uh, that aren't yet, but maybe just need to hear the word. We're called to edify those people. So when uh, when somebody's messing up as a brother or sister in Christ, it's our calling and our duty to correct them. Uh, so we go to them in person and we handle that. If they won't listen, we go, them, we go to them with another person from the church and we talk to them about it again. If that doesn't work, we bring them to the whole church. We bring, it to the, we bring the information um, and the, the circumstances that, to the church itself uh, to help correct this person. And if still they won't change their behavior and they won't start trying at least, um, very earnestly to uh, to get right with the Lord, then we need to leave them. Uh, we don't need to hand them over to Satan because that's not our job, and we don't probably know how to do that anyway. But we need to step back. We need to get out of that toxic situation because if these again, if these, and I'm talking about people that we spend most of our time with. Uh, there's a couple folks in my life recently that have been extremely toxic, making terrible choices, and I have done my due diligence in trying to correct them. I love these people. But I've noticed in spending more time with them when they're acting out in these behaviors, it kind of affects me. And I've, fallen my, I've found myself falling into sin and almost slipping up and falling back even into an addiction. I almost, I had a craving as a result of hanging out with these people um, because it was, it was not present, but it was kind of in my face and there was a lot of activity going on with these people that were affecting my thought life. And... Um, or that was affecting my thought life and I started wondering and I got to the point of desiring the feeling of getting intoxicated again and that scared the crap out of me because one more time going out there I may never come back I darn near died several times even just last year in 2020 uh, well now it's 2022 so we skipped a year um, but even in even in 2021 once in the early beginning I, uh, I almost checked out and uh, I just can't have that, man. I mean, I got a, I got a little girl to raise. Um, I have people in my life that count on me and rely on me and actually love and care about me, which is weird for me to even wrap my mind around because I used to be a dirtbag. But ultimately what I'm getting at here is that when there's a believer, a fellow believer that's in the faith and is still messing up, try to correct them. Spend less time with them, though, so that you're not affected. Um, it says in Scripture, uh, you know, if you dig a hole, you might fall into it. Uh, be careful with the people that you rebuke in the in the situations that you're that you go into to try to help these folks because it's there's a likely possibility that you may be tempted also. Uh, Satan likes to use all sorts of tools and mechanisms, um, including circumstances, even our own goodness, uh, to put ourselves in a situation where we would want to be helpful. Uh, he would even use that to tempt us and to try to get us to fall. And of course, God says that He'll never let us be tempted beyond what we can bear without providing a way out. Well, oftentimes the door is the way out. Um, and so sometimes we find ourselves in situations having to let go of friendships and relationships or at least dial it way back and give them an opportunity to repent and maybe notice your absence and notice that they're missing something in their life that they desperately should have. Um, so maybe that's, a, maybe that's a tool that God uses is the absence of a person that someone cares about to, remind, to let them know, hey, you're messing up. They can't be around that. If you want them in your life, then you got to get right, um, and then uh, and then come back. So that's something that I need to do in my life today, and as a matter of fact. So it's um, not ironic, but quite um, it's gloriously coincidental that I read that particular scripture talking about sexual immorality and all the other things that have to do with a person that I need to kind of get out of my life right now um, in a healthy and respectful way until they start acting right, until they start getting right with God and, and seeking Him with everything and loving Him first and not all this other carnal garbage that's going on that's a distraction away from Him. Um, and so, I hate to say this, even especially here, 
uh, but I'm kind of talking and thinking out loud as I do this. I need to, I have to make a decision. If behaviors aren't going to change, then the person has to get out of my life for a while, maybe permanently, um, but it's going to be based on their behavior and their actions and their heart, the character of their heart, the condition of their heart and where they're at with the Lord, because I only want people around me that are on fire for God. If they're not on fire for God, they're not clean and sober, I just don't have time for that. I cannot go back to the old life. And having people in my life that are dragging me down and pulling me back and making me think about making poor choices, I got an addictive personality to begin with. I'm impulsive to begin with. I am naturally attracted to uh, to carnal and you know earthly desires because for one, I'm a guy, I'm an addict in recovery, thank God. and. Um, and there's just a lot of things about my personality and some defects that I have that make me very susceptible to uh, making poor choices. So I need to take a step back and get some people out of my life that are, that are I don't want to say holding me back, but the liability of me making a mistake at this stage in my life is unprecedented and I just can't take it. I can't risk that. And so I'm sorry to say that I have to remove these people from my life, but that's the whole point of this message. As if there's toxic people in your life, the proximity to that toxic person will make you toxic. So, um, I just want to say um, just a blessing over you right now. I want to say thank you so much for watching the video. Um, again, my name is Daniel, and this is video 98. Uh, look for the book when it comes out, Road of Happy Destiny. should be uh, end of 22 or end of uh, or beginning of 2023. Uh, so, just my sincerest prayer in this moment that God bless you uh, continually and abundantly beyond even what you already deserve. I pray redemption and restoration over your life. A hedge of protection around you. Again, abundant blessings and that you enjoy the rest of this day and the rest of this week. I pray sincerely right now that you find something to be grateful for. Right now that God gives you the ability to be grateful because even that good thing comes from God. Even that ability to be thankful, that's a gift too. So I'm just praying right now uh, that God would simply uh, help you notice one thing to be grateful for in this moment right now, whether it's this video or something, anything else. Uh, and then I ask that you and pray that you would ask God humbly to help you notice the next thing to be grateful for after that and let that snowball effect take place. So thank you so much for watching, and I say all these things in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.